What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Art of War stream. Super excited to be here with you today as we're going to be talking about the top 10 trash units in the game. And we don't mean the worst units in the game, we mean mm -hmm. the units you take that are just there to be points or hold an area of the board or to die at specific times. All the units that are yeah. kind of embody the spirit of crew. <laughs> every army has an awesome, beautiful kill team box that doesn't do any damage at all, <laughs> and it's kind of cheap, and the models are beautiful, and you paint them lovingly so they can get killed on turn one to square your denial. We all know and cherish these units, so today we're going to be ranking them. Yep, uh, and there's actually quite a, there's quite a lot in the game, frankly, <laughs> yeah. uh, more than you would think, and so uh, a lot of stuff that you see all the time didn't make this list because there are so many choices, but we, you probably have played against almost all of these. Yeah, absolutely, and and even though we're talking about trash, we are ranking the best trash. The so best. you know, it, it's not actually going to be smelling here. This is going to be these are still going to be good units, just maybe not damage dealing units necessarily. Yeah, most of these do barely any damage, and guess what? They are very cheap because they don't do any damage. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be ranking these, and uh, if you like this type of content, if you like the tier list that we do, as well as our weekly YouTube game as well, and fix my list, mm -hmm. we fix your lists, our war members lists, then uh, do give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about us. All of that massively helps. In addition, mm -hmm. please leave a comment below letting us know what you think of our list here, as well as which trash units you get the most value out of. Absolutely. And if you want even more amazing Art of War content, make sure you check out our war. Mm -hmm. You can either get access to it right here on YouTube by becoming a gold member to get all our content, or by clicking the link in the description below. That's going to take you to our website, thewarm.vhx.tv, where you can not only get a free three-day trial, we're so confident you're going to like all of our amazing content. I'm we'll give it to you for free for a couple days. But if you sign up through our website, you'll even get access to our iOS and Android app. That way you can download our videos to watch them on a plane. You can listen to them with the screen closed, you know, if you're trying to be a little subtle at work. That's, that's how I do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know it, John. <laughs> um, you can get all of that right below on our website. Absolutely. So please do join us. Check out all the awesome content and uh, mm -hmm. three battle reports per week in addition to lots of other stuff. Uh, every month is going to have a video related to each faction. So Indeed. guaranteed content for the armies you love. All right, Mr. John. All right. So let's talk about the criteria a little bit before we yeah. dive into some honorable mentions. Whenever we make these lists, it's so hard to narrow it down to 10. There's always a couple units. Well, surely that has to be in the top 10, but there are 11 things better than it. Yes. So there's always those. <laughs> So what we're looking at here is units that are cheap, that aren't that aren't also a damage dealer. Like their primary role, due to either their rules, their cost, whatever, makes them efficient units for scoring points, and you don't mind if they die. Exactly. Now, something like a warp spider, you could say, oh, it's cheap and it's fast and it plays the mission great. True, but it also kills tanks, so it's not going to make it on the trash list. Same thing I saw people mention breacher teams and Tau. <laughs> yes, they're Tau's best primary denial tool, but at the same time, they can do a lot of damage, and they have all sorts of tricks related to them. Yeah, I've been shot by those. That's, that's not trash. Yeah, that is that's a legitimately good unit. <laughs> Yeah, all right, so let's dive into our first honorable mention, shall we? Yep, we got a couple honorable mentions here before we dive into the top 10, starting with the Humble Gretchen. These guys, basically one unit makes every single orc list, yep. and usually just that one unit. And its entire purpose is to literally just sit on your home objective as an orc player, mm -hmm. and when it's sitting there on a four up, not turn one if you go first, but uh, otherwise you're able to access it, the four up, uh, you get a CP. Yeah, it's a cheap unit that can give you some command points, and it holds objectives, and that's literally all it is. It is not particularly fast. Its damage is uh, negligible. What are their pistols called? They have a special name, right? Oh, uh, I thought it was a Grot Blaster. Grot Blaster, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a Laz pistol. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, but that, that's all it is. And you know what? We love Gretchen for what they are. We don't expect them to be more because we don't want to pay more for them. Now, the nice thing about them is that it, it is a 10-body unit, mm -hmm. so you can string out, cover a decent amount of space, meaning mm -hmm. maybe like five Storm Boys can cover the other half of your deployment zone. Sure. And in that case, you got your backfield screen, you're potentially gaining extra CP, yeah. so you don't have to discard tactical cards, or if you go for uh, no fixed, which orcs definitely like. Mm -hmm. It's just a solid it just unit. It sits on your home objective, and you're never tempted to run it out. You're never no. like, man, the opponent's pressing it hot. 
I might need the grot blasts. <laughs> Worry not, my friend. They will sit on that objective and do nothing else. Worry not. You will never roll that <laughs> those attacks out. <laughs> All right. All right. So Gretchen, they make the lovely honorable mention. Mm -hmm. And then moving on to our next one, which is a unit near and dear to Mr. John's heart. Yeah. This is the Pyrovore. And the Pyrovore, now you may have said, John, but we just said no damage dealing units. And I've seen your Pyrovores kill aspect warriors. That's true. Um, but the Pyrovore is a great trash piece, not just because it, it provides a little something more. Yes. It's not like a tank killer or anything. But it's just it's just a heavy flamer on legs. Six spidery, beautiful legs. I love the new spider aesthetic. I've heard people complain about spider nids. Nah, this is awesome. Um, but it's a little bit of an extra roll, and I also love that this is a tough trash piece. For oh, yeah. <clears throat> 35 points. How? How? <laughs> hey, it went up. <laughs> I already got my points here. If I'm good now, it was 30 points, right? It was 30. <laughs> what is that? 30 was pretty great. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but for 35 points and the same base size as the Avatar of Cain, uh, you get a you get five wounds of T6 with a three of armor save. And yeah, this thing like can die to like Laz cannons and Meltas, but it's 35 points. Uh, so I don't really lose too much sleep over that. And I love that it is very durable whenever it gets hit by other trash. So it's a cheap scoring thing. It presses a button. It is stunningly easy to move block someone with the giant base of the Pyrovore. And it does provide a little bit of extra support in that it strips cover from what it hits. Mm -hmm. So, and this will be a theme. We'll see this in some other things. But even if it doesn't do much damage itself, it's a twin link heavy flamer. That's slightly better, but like, cool. That's it. Um, but the Pyrovore is very cheap, very disposable. You don't feel bad when you lose it. It can go forward and accomplish something to contribute while you're doing something. Like, if you can run this thing forward for area denial, point a flamer at something and not feel bad about being like, here, no cover. All right, my Pyrovore is dead next turn. But it also isn't dying to bulk guns. You have to fire an actual gun at a Pyrovore because yeah. anything that is going to kill a Pyrovore is something I did not want sh getting shot at an Exocrine. <laughs> like, like, fine, you popped a multi-melt, you killed the Pyrovore, cool. Thank you for one less gun into the card effects, please. Yeah, it is completely sacrificial. And how I know it fits here in the list mm -hmm. is that I think with your tier in list, you always put one in. And then one. at the very end of the list, you're like, how do I get a second Pyrovore to be trash in here? And yep. that is how I know it fits right here. Yes. Because <laughs> you want more of them, but it's hard to fit all that in. Yep, and I, I usually like to take two. I found that two is my happy place. Three is great if I can ever make it work, but fitting three usually doesn't work out. At that point, it's like, oh, I could have just had a Gargoyle Squad or something. But uh, I, like, I, like, I like having two. It's good yeah. trash. It is, it is very... I mean, most armies would take that trash. Ignore cover. <laughs> it's so good. Just point .4 points per dollar. We don't <laughs> ask questions here. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm moving on to the next honorable mention. You All may right. be familiar with this if you are a Sisters player. Crusaders. Uh, they are... Are they old resin at this point? Or are they still... You so, can still buy them in metal? Uh, I think they're, they're old fine cast resin still. But if you really want to, you can buy a lot of... Uh, Godfred de Montebart, the um, the Blackstone Fortress Crusader character. Aha. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and, you know, finding normal Crusaders in stock is a bit of a chore these days. So I usually see conversions, uh, if we're being honest. <laughs> but the Crusader is the absolute definition of cheapest OC possible. As a matter of fact, I am not aware of a less of, of I'm not aware of a less expensive unit in the game right now. So 25, 25 points. points. I what are rippers? Oh, okay. Rippers are twenty. I right. got them. Got them. You got me on the tier too. That's embarrassing. <laughs> All right. I think this is the cheapest unit that has OC. Fair. And that that's worth something right there. Like that gets an honorable mention. Now they do nothing else. They are two one wound guys with a four pin vulnerable and a power sword, which is which is nice, right? Sometimes you need to kill a one wound scout, um, and they're very good at that. Um, but I, they're just, they're so cheap. And their utility extra for sisters is in their miracle ice. Yep. Um, just when they die, take a dice. Shove a 25-point unit out of a rhino onto an objective. Area yeah. denial. Cleanse. Cleanse. Secure no man's land. Then they die and get you miracle dice. Mm -hmm. So they just fill that, that cycle that sisters want. Or they can sit in your backfield and you can do investigate signals and all that random stuff back there. Yeah, it's a screen. It is a unit. It is... Truly, truly incredible. And you might be wondering, why is a 25-point unit that does nothing besides stand in a spot not higher on this list? And that's because in Sisters, 
They have a lot of trash. They do. They have a lot, a lot of trash. This just trash kind of cannibalized itself. It really does. So it's like, okay, you can go over these, or you can spend a bit more points and upgrade to a Battle mm. Sister Squad that can split up, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, a Seraphim unit, a Zephyrim unit. There's yeah, so there's many. a lot of options, so mm -hmm. they're a little less valuable specifically. But if you had, like, Imperial Knights player and they could access these, they'd be, like, three in every list. <laughs> every single list would have three units of them. Not even a question. <laughs> Not even a doubt in my mind. Um, so in that case, they, they obviously would be very good as a game-wide trash unit. And, and we saw this with mm -hmm. the uh, Adeptus Arbites, the, yeah. <laughs> the, ex the exaction, exaction squads. squads. As soon as you put, like, the cheapest thing available, armies that need cheap things will just grab it. Even if it doesn't do anything, it's just a body. Yep. And a lot of these armies need bodies. Indeed they do. All right, and then next up, our last honorable mention. Mm -hmm is the Sisters of Silence Prosecutors from Custodes. Indeed. The Prosecutor is quite humble. It is also quite cheap. Uh, 40 points for four girls. Yes, there's five in the picture, but one of them can be built as a superior, which means GW and their infinite kindness let us take a cheaper unit if we want to. <laughs> um, so thanks for that. Four Prosecutors for 40 points. Uh, this is another very cheap unit. Um, it's, oh, it's just... It's a little better than some of the other cheap units because it's a three-up armor save, only one wound each. There's a bolt gun. No one cares about that. Um, I have a three-up feeling the pain against psychic weapons, which does not matter. I have never seen that come up, but I want to. Oh, I had one tank the Incarn's Flamer once. <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, like, Incarn's Flamer is just like, here, a trash squad. Let me just kill it. I'm like, it's fun fact. I'm actually alive. <laughs> um, big surprise. But uh, no, the, the big thing here is that it's still it's a good leadership trash unit, mm -hmm. and it's OC two. Which is and so nice. when you get into situations where you compare this to some other units that might make the list, especially some other forty point units that you could take in a custodies army, because this is a custodies only trash unit, of course, uh, you realize a prosecutor squad is still gonna be better. OC two is a big deal because sometimes when you just have a couple cheap bodies on an objective and their OC1, someone accidentally drifts a tank or consolidates a noteworthy character onto the objective. And you're like, dang, that actually contested me. Yeah. And then when a prosecutor squad's like, okay, I know this like looks like it's nothing and I didn't actually pay points for it, this is 8 OC behind the wall. Like, it, <laughs> you're like, what? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> like, you don't just consolidate a guy on. You have to put a full unit on to take this for me. That actually came up in a game that we played, Necrons vs. Custodies, mm -hmm. where I had my Crypto Thralls rapid ingress into your backfield and yep. made the charge. And you were like, I still have enough OC. I'm like, what? <laughs> they're, they're OC too. They're battle lines. Yeah. <laughs> it was annoying. Yeah, it's it's just it's small little things. Um, and it but it, it works out. And so uh, they get an honorable mention here, uh, because they're they're pretty dang good. Yeah, they yeah. they are pretty and they're, they're dang good. They're good for custodies, especially. An army that basically has a bunch of bricks or tanks and shoves most of that up the board. There's not a lot sitting back there, John. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, obviously with Imperial Agents, any Imperium Army could take some cheap units. We, we know this. It will be addressed at some point in the next uh, video. Yep. This video, actually. <laughs> um, but the fact that, like, if you ever want to not use Imperial Agents, or if you just want to have, like, a better version, that, uh, that gets them on the list. Yep, absolutely. All right, now moving into the dedicated top ten, starting absolutely. with number ten here. Chaos Cultists. Now, nobody is a bigger fan of basic cultists than Mr. Nick Nanavati. That's true. Nobody has run more of them on the table for mm -hmm. less effect than, yeah. <laughs> than our good friend. Mr. I think Nick. less is more. Less is more. Less is more these <laughs> and we decided to put this as number 10 specifically so that we could say that 10 Chaos Cultists is a good trash unit. It is the perfect number. Yeah, I would say 10 is the ideal number <laughs> of cultists. But... Cultists bring a couple of things. They bring some of the same value as Gretchen. It is a cheap 10-man unit, and like Gretchen, they never do damage, so you're not tempted to try and do damage with them. And if you are tempted, you are going to be just smited by the Chaos Gods. Absolutely. <laughs> they will let you know. But honestly, Chaos Cultists give a very important rule that you want in your trash. Sticky an objective. I want sticky objectives. I want sticky objectives in every list I can get it. Yep. Every single... Every army that has access to his, access to sticky objectives basically mm -hmm. takes it. Is there an army out there that doesn't take sticky objectives? Space Marines. Space Marines is the only one, and that's because... The Intercessor can... is truly incredible. <laughs> <laughs> they made a data sheet not worth it. <laughs> they, they managed to find a way. <laughs> they found a way, okay. Yeah. So that's the one unique example, although I have seen it in some Space Marine lists. I, I'm not going to lie to you, just that rule for Intercessors has me like consider them every once in a while. And I, but could I? And then I'm like... 
dang, I really can't. <laughs> I really can't do but that. But if they were cheaper as cultists, you would definitely do Absolutely. It. And so we get, uh, we get Chaos Cultists. And this, by the way, kind of includes the various types of cultists that, it, it, that exist. Uh, the Blood God Jackal Cultists, those ones. War Leaders Cultists. Also get a... They kind of get roped into the same thing because, frankly, I'm not ranking the different kinds of 10-man chaos cultists that can stick to an objective. They're just all getting one spot, but especially when you have one that could be Nurgle. And so you could just say, yeah, I'm just going to not let you shoot the cheap unit that's holding my objectives. And, oh, you didn't shoot them. I suppose they're sticky now. Yeah. And the great thing is, even if they do kill them at some point, they like actually dedicate indirect fire to go pick up your cultist. Cool, they sticky the objective yeah, already, like, who, so who you still control it. Um, and it, it's also good, these type of units are very good for in the center of the board. Mm -hmm. If you're playing against another army that wants to you know, slow the pace of the game, play into the late game, you put them on the objective first and force some sort of commitment, especially if they're Nurgle. Yep. And then you're like, okay, well, now you committed something real to try and kill these cultists. If they don't finish them off, mm -hmm. that's a huge problem. <laughs> yeah, then it's sticking. You're going to have to go into the middle at some point. Exactly. Chaos Space Marines. So... Good, cheap, sticky provides a valuable rule in addition to being a cheap body. That's pretty good. I think that they're quite good. And we basically see that one unit in almost every single Absolutely. Chaos one unit of Chaos Cultists, the perfect number, as, as we always say here in Ardmore. And then uh, for this next unit, you definitely see more than that. More than one is good. More than one. So. This is the Scout Sentinel, which uh, I think is the best tr trash unit in Guard. Uh, an army that can take multiple trash units. But the Scout Sentinel, again, checks the box that we were looking for. It's not only, are you a good trash unit in a pinch? Do you do something else? Is there something else? So a Scout Sentinel, similar to a Pyrovor, is an obnoxiously large base that is not, like, actually tough, but is definitely tough enough to require some work. It's very cheap for a 7-wound vehicle with T7 and a 3-up armor save. It is 60 points. Its damage output is fine. There is usually a heavy weapon and then what is basically a chainsword. Yes. Just like a normal, like I would trade it for a normal space for a chainsword. <laughs> but it's a worse chainsword. Um, but it's all about, it's cheap. It's very fast. With orders, it becomes very fast. It moves 10, it scouts 9. That disconnect always messes with me. But it moves 10, scouts 9. Usually it's the you same. You can order it to move 13 if you really need it to go fast. So it is a very cheap very fast unit that can run around and score things. It's so cheap that I don't mind if it dies, especially if I've got some command points handy. Uh, in the current Astro Militarum, uh, what is it, the Combined Arms Detachment? Um, uh, combined Regiments. Yeah. Combined sounds, Regiments Detachment. Right. Um, you, you can use it to very good effect because it buffs indirect as well. It's that the Scout Sentinel, maybe not doing damage, but in the, in the beginning of the shooting phase, it picks an enemy visible in 18, and your army gets reroll ones to hit and ignore the indirect penalty against it. And this is great, because unlike the Pyrovore's buff, and this is one of the reasons it's ahead of it, the Pyrovore does have to shoot to strip cover and give a buff to the army. The Sentinel has to see ya, which means that the Sentinel could advance, can't advance and shoot like the Pyrovore, and then be like, dang, I guess I'm not going to shoot my plasma cannon. Anyways, I see you, done. <laughs> also, it's way faster. Also, it can do an action and call in its little orbital thing as well. And then, of course, you can come back from the dead. Yep. So if you, <laughs> if you like, are really just like, man, uh, I just, I can't believe I drew area denial and teleport homers on top of one. Is it, do I really want to lose this unit? I don't. Okay, we'll spend two CP to score both our cards and put the Sentinel back in reserve if you kill it. Mm. But you still had to commit to coming out to kill it, just so we're clear. <laughs> like, you, you still got to step into tank commander line of sight. And it doesn't die to just nonsense. It doesn't. Like, you're, you're not killing this thing with a squad of, like, you know, like Howlin' Banshees or something terrible, or like Chaos Cultists. Like you got to use some, you got to use some really good something good. It's T seven. Is it? Its rule is called Spotter, right, or something like that. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. The Games Workshop took my Spotter idea for Tau, said, "Screw Tau, here mm. guard." <laughs> I've always wanted that for uh, for Hive Guard. If I'm being honest, I feel like if I feel like they should think... need synapses to see the target. Yeah, I, I and think then there should be more rules the... like it. Yeah. Uh, but as a matter of fact, the Scout Sentinel made it onto the top ten list. Thank you so much, Mac, Max Kraus, for being a member for 12 months of the gold tier. Thank you so much for your continued mm -hmm. support. Nice idea for a list. Hey, what are those things you see on the side of buildings made of stone with wings? Now, I'm assuming you're referring <laughs> to gothic architecture and like those little um, cherubs, those little demons, those... Yeah. 
God, I don't remember what they're they called. They start with a G, right? Yeah, I think so. But they, they, sometimes they spout water out of their mouths. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not a, it's a really I'm fancy place. Yeah, I'm not a real student of uh, you know Gothic churches, and I've definitely never taken tours of them. So uh, I don't know. I just can't remember. It, Check back into the end of the episode. It's Quasimodo. Of course, Quasimodo <laughs> hanging out at the top with his guys. Yep. Oh. <laughs> well, Thanks so fun. much, Max. All right, here we go. Moving on to numero eight. This is Skitari. So uh, there was definitely a bunch of bad units that could have made this list. The, the army is full of uh, quote-unquote trash units. This is the best of them. This is the Vanguard unit. And the reason that it's so good is it's two OC each. They're the battle line unit. But their aura, three-inch aura, is minus one OC to non-vehicles slash monster or non-vehicles. Mm -hmm. And because of that... They outcontest other battle line units very easily. And for an army that doesn't kill things very quickly, you need to make sure that you're scoring points or denying points. And this mm -hmm. is basically the best guarantee that Admech have to do it. Because Admech can kill a handful of models, even from a relatively durable unit. But to kill a lot of stuff, they're not really doing that. So you need to be able to say, this one objective, I'm just going to contest it every single turn with Vanguard and not have to worry about killing anything on it. And this unit does it better than most. And yeah. I think if a lot of armies had access to Vanguard, they would think about taking a unit or two of them just because they can guarantee so many different types of contest plays. In the Skatari 100 cohort, they obviously get significantly better. Or if you add various allies in, you mm -hmm. can put them in a transport. You can put them in, well, Kyria Draxis can go inside and she can shoot twice, maybe more than that. She can shoot like four times as hard as the whole unit. Yep. Like easily. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> she can shoot as hard as like four Vanguard units. So this unit is utterly fantastic for the denial stuff. And mm -hmm. then in 100 cohort, you can get advanced and charge. So the speed of them gets even yep. more insane. You can give them access to scout slash infiltrate with clandestine infiltrator if you throw a marshal in there. So just a very good all-around unit, and you can also loan off them in that detachment. But we're not really ranking it on that, just as a trash unit baseline. Super consistent good. primary denial tool. What kills me is that it's minus one OC, and it doesn't say to a minimum of one. And it's, it's never so good that it made me think that the Death Guard rule also didn't have it. But no, your version is just better than the Chaos version, as it, it should be, if we're just being honest. It's the here. one thing Admech has that's like one of the best in the game for yeah. like primary denial and, tools. And you know what? Good and for it's, you. It's, it's like I'm not the trying one thing to take it away. <laughs> GW, please. <laughs> but um, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, yeah. <laughs> they are spiteful, though. Well, yeah, it Max. was such a weird thing where, like, we, we played a game of Dark Angels versus this guitar. And I had this sudden realization of, dear God, if he gets near. I, my entire army was OC1. Yeah. Like, I can put 10 Terminators on an objective, ring it out so he can't touch it. And then he gets vaguely near me, and I don't hold it anymore. That that literally was a game I played against Quentin. I was trying, I was showing off the Explorator Manifold, which mm -hmm. there was nothing there anyway, but yeah. <laughs> I did it. And I sent a Vanguard squad out. He had two, a Terminator unit strung out with you know, over two objectives, and I was just like, Vanguard within three of it. You're not controlling those. And at the end of the game, he walked onto my home objective to get all like a boatload of extra points from like Scorch Earth. And I was like, nah, you're within three of these Vanguard. <laughs> no. <laughs> Terrible. Just just atrocious, truly. So fun. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's Katari Vanguard making the list for a reason. Let's move on to number seven. Lucky number seven, shall we? Oh, the Jukari Ooh, fans are going to be I, happy. I, I grabbed the new image of them. I don't know when this is releasing, but the new image looks fantastic. I cannot wait. These are the Jukari Mandrakes, mm -hmm. and it's just a very solid skirmish unit, but its real highlight is that it can go back into reserve. Yep. And units that can do this are extremely prized because they open up either forcing your opponent to screen all game, mm -hmm. or with, if you take tactical, a lot of points open up in your opponent's backfield in the final yep. couple turns. Yeah. And this, the, one of the reasons Mandrakes made it on here is that they, they don't just have one cool movement trick. They also infiltrate. Yes. Like, and if you ever have two different ways to do funny good stuff, like ways to move around, someone's forward so I can get early cards, then I go into reserve so I can get late cards, that's great in a trash unit. And so the Mandrakes get a little bit of a bump there. One other thing I want to call out with Mandrakes is they don't do enough damage to not make the list. But they do do enough damage to be a useful trash unit. Yes. Because their gun is terrible. Sometimes that gun doesn't, like, kill a spore mine. However, let's just remember, any gun with devastating wounds is a good thing to fire at something with one wound left. Yes. <laughs> and so they're decent in combat. There are a couple of attacks. I think they're AP1. They're doing damage one. They're not crazy. So they can go and hit something. And they're a multi-gun shot on each guy with devastating wounds. 
And that means they can put decent work into a lot of units. There's a game I watched where they did more in combat than in shooting somehow, and I was just <laughs> shocked. <laughs> you, you never know what you're getting with yeah. them, but you, you can. When, when your Dark Lance rolls the one on the damage, and then you've got a one-wound tank, and you're just like, boy, I really don't want to shoot another Dark Lance at this. Andrix. Just yeah, enough damage. Just, just could, one six. Just, just need one six just to one see if you can pull it off. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but Mandrakes, because of the, that infiltrate and redeployability, they're making it. Yep. Um, and I think a lot of armies would want access to this because the combo of infiltrate. Some armies just don't have infiltrate or have it on expensive units. And mm -hmm. a lot of armies don't have access to go back into reserve outside of like specific detachments. Yep. So, having those rules are just, I want them. I want them. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. On to the top six. Here we go. We should have made this eight. That's our fault, really. <laughs> this is our bad. We should have. Uh, so this is Chaos Spawn, although it's going to be very specific to World Eater Spawn. Yep. And that is because they can gain access to a wide variety of rules that make them quite annoying to deal with. First of all is that they have uh, a handful of wounds, but they can get access um, to buff their mm -hmm. five of Theno Pain to a four of Theno Pain. And four yeah, up is the point where one. math is just, it doesn't exist anymore. Absolutely. <laughs> you could drop a lot of damage. You could drop like two Palladius shots. Yeah, you could you could you could do anything really to these chaos spawn. They might just live. Uh, you could hit them with like a whole warden unit, and it might get a little hairy. Um, chaos spawn are just durable, and their high toughness. They heal wounds in command phases. They don't heal models, so if you kill a spawn model, you kill a spawn model. But just tough models with a feel no pain that are cheap, that are fast. Again, they don't hit so hard in combat that they're that they're escaping the tier list. But they do hit hard enough in combat that, like, my cheap little scoring unit, if it happens to find a scout to brush up against, I'm not mad about it. Yeah. Or if you have those two crusaders out there or, like, a couple scouts, it'll, yep. it'll start killing those. Yeah. If spawn and scouts fight and they just sit there forever until one is dead, it will be spawn alive at the end 100% of the time. <laughs> and that's sometimes what you need in a trash unit. It's not... You're not sending these into Terminators with high hopes. And yeah. That's okay. And in the niche of world leaders, they fit extremely well because they can be the first thing out onto objectives. Mm -hmm. They require some real commitment to actually kill. And then those things are now closer to you. And exactly. you can interact with them. And even if they die, mm -hmm. you just stick you the objective yeah. you're on. And we, we only wanted to put one type of spawn unit. You could make an argument for Thousand Sun spawn, for Death Guard spawn, for CSM spawn, uh, one day... GW will bless me with Emperor's Children spawn. But until that point, Never. we feel like world leaders are the best of the spawn. And especially yep. they're good for world leaders because world leaders, their demon limitations are to corn only, which means they can't take other gods' demons. If they could, we might be talking about the number five spot. Yep. <laughs> right. But we're not. Uh, thank you so much to Ballbag for joining us in the War of mm -hmm. Bronze. Really appreciate your support. And uh, welcome to our community. Make sure you join our Discord by syncing your YouTube account with your Discord account. Thank you so much. Speaking of number five, the unit that world leaders would take if they could, just like <laughs> the unit every army would take if they could. Every Chaos Army. <laughs> yeah, really, they already do. Uh, I nurglings. guess Thousand Suns can't, but. Yep. <laughs> nurglings. Nurglings are good. They are cheap. They, they don't. They don't do much, but what they do is really effing annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're just going to have a cheap unit that you that can infiltrate or deep strike, it doesn't have to pick up. It doesn't have to have OC if it's cheap enough. Yes. And it is also, oh, it's like toughness nothing with a six up save. It's so fragile. 12 wounds. <laughs> like, dang. So it's, it's more than you think to chew through. Yeah. And on top of that, they also have an extremely annoying aura which is minus one to hit in melee if you're within six inches of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not for vehicles Not and for... monsters, but yeah. like against other infantry, you just sometimes look at this and you're like, huh, I did not expect to be this bad in combat because there was a nurgling nearby. <laughs> yeah, there were nurglings like behind the unit you charge and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to kill this unit, no problem. Oh, shoot, minus one to hit? Yeah. Uh-oh. Um, it's a very cheap teleport homer unit. It's a very cheap... Uh, screen, if you just want to infiltrate and stop some scout moves. It's a very cheap cleanse unit that you can shove on a point and just sit there forever. It is a very cheap melee debuff. It is just cheap, and because it's a battle line demon, you can just take them, and it's not a big deal. Yep. <laughs> right? You just you just shove them into a, a CSM or a Death Guard list or a Cast Knight list, and you'd, or a demon list, we're just being honest here, theoretically, and you just don't have to worry about, oh, did I pay the tax? 
You know, it's like the whole reason you don't take, you don't ally flamers is because you don't want to pay a pink whore tax to do it. Yeah. Nerdlings, they are their own cost. That's it. Um, now, John, correct me if I'm wrong, but at Crucible last year, mm -hmm. some hero ran the magical, what is it, 54 Nerdlings? Uh, unfortunately, I don't recall. I am I have pretty sure that, that somebody there had the max Nurgling list, mm -hmm. and that person is a hero because I'm they are sure the Nurglings were having a great One time. One thing I've got to say about Nurglings, they're obviously garbage in combat. However, they are lethal hits. And when your weapon skill 5 lethal hits, your strength characteristic doesn't actually come up that much. And so Nurglings, though they be annoying, a key do more damage than you want. Like, if you consolidate a land raider into some guardsmen, you're kind of just assuming nothing's going to happen. The Nurglings are going to put a couple of saves on anything in combat. And it's not a big deal, right? It's AP 0, it's damage 1. But it's just one of those things where sometimes when you have, like, a two-wound rhino and you're like, ah. Two I, lethal like, snake eyes. <laughs> I, I, really, I really could lose two wounds to a Nurgling squad. And it just... <laughs> It's just it's just a cherry on top of a unit that is a little too good. Good news is, if you're a Nurgling fan, Nick's most recent Chaos Demon list um, that he's going to be playing soon mm -hmm. has a nine-man Nurgling unit. So if you're God, a big I'm, fan of Nurglings, you're going to enjoy that so one. so happy to hear that. <laughs> good for him. <laughs> All right. That's number five. We're into the top four now. Let's hit it. All right. So this, if you don't recognize this unit, I don't blame you. It is the Inquisitorial Henchman. Mm -hmm. otherwise called inquisitorial agents and um, some of these are meant for kill team but uh, a handful of the regular models you can run in warhammer yep. and in running them this is basically one of the cheapest units that you can get period and for imperium it's the cheap unit you can access yes. uh, you, most armies really don't buy any of the extra models like the mystic or any of the other stuff because they require an inquisitor inside the unit to activate mm -hmm. their abilities so you just buy them to be four two wound people who stand in places. And they are cheap. They're yeah. 40 points. It's four dudes. The, the two wounds is the surprising part. They're like, really? That guy's two wounds? That's a naked guardsman with a chainsaw. I'm like, that's true. They're in training, John. But he's been training. <laughs> and so he can take a bullet before he goes down. Um, you know, he hangs out the Inquisitor enough to get a little bit tougher. They are... Part of their big value to me is because they're an agent. And so you can take them in almost any Imperium list. And now not every Imperium list feels the need to take them. Add back. <laughs> but if you have trash problems, I feel bad for you, son. Yes. <laughs> I got 99 problems, the henchman solves 98 of them. <laughs> um, I don't need to stick your objectives, I just pay 40 points and I leave a henchman either. Just there. as the exaction squads before them, all Imperium. <laughs> Thanks to the Emperor for the access to the Inquisitorial yeah. henchman. Um, and yeah, and the, just having a second wound it's a funny thing where they're they're really bad leadership, but because it's a four man, you don't have to take a battle shock test on them until they're down three guys, which is means you have to be down six wounds before you actually take a battle shock. So it does doesn't come up that often. Yeah, like you have to have exactly one guy before the leadership comes up, and they're they're not high OC. Uh, their damage is negligible. You get a plasma pistol and an eviscerator and two pistol things in your like four man, I think. But they they really went higher on the list than something like prosecutors. Because they're widely available. Mm -hmm. It's because you could take them in custodies, then you can compare them to a prosecutor and decide which one's better. Maybe it's prosecutors for custodies. But uh, for knights, it's not prosecutors. Nope, it is. It's, it's, it's the acolytes. For space marines, it's the acolyte. Uh, you, when you want that cheap unit, a lot of armies don't have a 40 point gap filler yep. in the Imperium. And just having a unit makes them so valuable. Yeah, the thing is, like, often there's all weird breakpoints you get at the end of the list mm -hmm. where you can't add any more enhancements, you don't want to cut what you have, and there's just this gap, and you're like, I could just use a unit, they're in. Yeah, and they're always useful. You can put in reserves, it'll outflank and when you draw a card, or it'll screen, you are not going to feel bad when it dies, or it sits on the backfield, screens behind you, never does anything, and it's cheap. So many options. Don't mind what I do with any of them. The unit is also looks amazing, by the way. The, if you if you can actually get the actual models, and I think they are finally like actually in stock in most places again. They're in stock at Warpfire. Uh, okay. Then the models are beautiful. Yes. All right. So that was number four. Moving on Top to three. number three. Near and dear to my heart. Boom. Another Six kill team box. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, man, half of these things have been kill team boxes so far. <laughs> uh, the Space Marine Scout. Mwah. Yes. 
Uh, I love the Space Marine Scout. Every Space Marine Every player Space does. Marine player does, but I, I love them the most. It was funny. We had like a period of time where it was Space Marine Scouts all the time, and Games Workshop was like, I want you running Space Marines, not just Scouts. Yep. Okay, nerf Scouts. They're back. They're back. <laughs> so Mandrakes made the list because they had two different cool deployment rules. Scouts are ahead of them, for they have three, and they're cheaper. <laughs> Space Marine Scouts have Infiltrate. They have Scout. They can go back into reserves and come back. They also have an assault weapon for free because that's how temp works. And so you can get them advancing and actioning quite easily. Uh, you can put a smattering of damage in there. Like, it's not nothing, but getting a chainsword and a heavy bolter and a sniper rifle is better than not. Mm -hmm. um, but they are two wounds. They are not, like, tough, tough. But when it comes to, like, things that kill a squad of cultists don't necessarily kill a squad of scouts. And so they, they are one tier up. They're not bottom tier of durability for trash. And you, you put all of that together. You have good movement tricks, good redeploy tricks, yep. good infiltrate tricks. You can use them cheap and not feel bad. And you can say, cool, this thing is going to move block the world leader's army so I don't get hit turn one with something more expensive. Or you can just say, hey, I'm going to keep them back. I'm going to scout backwards. Or now that I've gone first, I'll scout backwards, run backwards. And now this unit is going to be just cycling reserves and scoring cards for me all game long. They are good enough to beat up other cheap trash units eventually. They're, again, they're not the gold standard of damage for trash, not the gold standard of durability for trash. They are only 65 points. That 10-point upgrade uh, sure did come out of other units in the list, not the scouts. And they have so many movement rules that I just love them. I, I, I don't run a space run list without two of these still. I mean, if any army had access to this, they would take it. There, are, there are very few it. armies that would not. I can think of one army that wouldn't. Which one? <laughs> Well, we're going to talk about the number two. <laughs> <laughs> they might take one unit. They, might, they still might, honestly. All right, here we go. We've got Swooping Hawks coming in, swooping in, and uh, yep. number two. Um, so I know we talked about like how two versus three weird movement tricks. Swooping Hawks have one. They have the redeploy, but they have Deep Strike with it, so they have the best version. However, instead of redeploy tricks, they have a trick called being really fast. <laughs> also cheap. <laughs> And you know, something we didn't mention with scouts, but something I do like in, in trash units when I can get it, is the grenade keyword. Yes, Just I, li I like me the grenade keyword. Scouts had it, which was worth mentioning, we just forgot to. And Swooping Hawks had it, which is it, I think is even more important than Eldar, because Eldar don't actually have a ton of grenades. Mm -hmm. They so have the Autark. The yes. Autark and Swooping Hawks is most of where they get their grenades. And so having a unit with grenades that is insanely fast, they move 14, they can redeploy into Deep Strike, they have assault weapons... They can fire and fade to be super trash and do move blocky trash things even better than anyone else while avoiding Overwatch. Uh, but the fact that they can just move 20 and then be eligible to shoot. And then if they want to, they could fire and fade another 14. Criminal. Yes. <laughs> just, just criminal as far as I'm concerned. They can basically do whatever you want. And the great thing about them is, once again, because they can go into reserve, they can screen the backfield for the first three turns and then be like, cool, I get to do anything else the rest of the game. No. And there are a lot of volume, which means that as a trash unit, again, we're not we're not accepting damage dealing units. No, absolutely no warp spiders on this tier list. Uh, but as a trash unit, because they're a high volume trash unit, they're also good at skirmishing other trash units. Mm -hmm. If you just shoot at cultists and you say, "Man, all I brought are these damage one AP zero strength four guns with high rate of fire," and then the cultists are like, "Cool, a lot of six guns. That's bad." <laughs> Swooping Hawks are going to clear scouts pretty, or clear something like cultists pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Not going to clear a scout squad in one go, but clear some cultists pretty quickly. And they're so fast, they're going to get where they want. They have so many cool uh, redeploy tricks. And they can make great use of all the other rules. Yeah. Other thing is like, ooh, I have a trash unit. I'm going to put it in a spot where it could die. Okay, it'll stand in that spot. Phantasm. Now, it's less reliable now, but you can keep these guys alive or make it really annoying for your opponent to overcommit yeah, to kill them. Yeah, and on 25 millimeter bases, they're not hard to hide. <laughs> they're not hard to hide. <laughs> My God. Yeah, so Swooping Ox, we, we feel like they just, they had to get, they had to get a mention. Yeah, I mean, talk about like premium trash right, right. there. Yeah. That, that's the sterling gold standard. Uh, someone in the chat was predicting Gretchen as the win. Unfortunately, Gretchen have already featured in this tier list, which means that only the best trash unit in the game is left. Number and, uh, one. Some people have guessed. <laughs> some people have made some guesses that were accurate. And if they've seen a good player use these units, they understand why they are number one. Mm -hmm. It's the gargoyle! 
Yeah, they are. <laughs> Gargoyles are the number one trash unit in the game because they're not trash, they're beautiful. Look at those pretty wings. Look at those beautiful birds. I'm painting more of them because I don't have enough trash on my list. Let's get more gargoyles. You're a sadist. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it takes a while, but we're doing it. Some things are worth the effort. The juice is worth the squeeze when it comes to gargoyles. Uh, boy, is this kit mildly annoying to put together because it's just a little bit old, but it's, it's also easy. Then it's the stems that kill me. However, the gargoyle is king. Gargoyle has gotten a points increase, and that is... Totally fine because it's still great. Gargoyles made the list because they are a very fast objective contesting unit. They are very good at primary. They are perfectly good at secondaries. They're very good at denying primary and they're very good at move blocking. Compared to something like Swooping Hawks, which have more mov mobility tricks, Gargoyles are OC two and twice as many dudes. Yes. And they're not as mobile as Swooping Hawks. And if I could fire and fade a gargoyle, you'd never hear the end of it. But instead, I can fire and fade a gargoyle after I shoot. Dang it, wait a minute. <laughs> um, gargoyles move 12. They're OC2. They have an 18-inch assault weapon. Assault is important here uh, because it means they can advance and shoot. Advance and be eligible to shoot if you need to press a button. And they have their special rule where after I shoot, they make a 6-inch normal move. Mm -hmm. So a gargoyle unit that moves 12 is really moving 18 plus D6 if I'm remotely in the mood. And because it can work out of deep strike as well, it means I can deep strike. I can't deep strike 3 away, but I can deep strike 9 away, fire and fade 6 inches, and then I end up 3 away. Yeah. Or and you can so, rapid ingress them in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Everyone who's like, I'm going to put a 40 millimeter base in the center so that you can't touch a gargoyle on, I'm like, okay, that'll work. I'm like, all right, rapid ingress. <laughs> I guess it's still happening. <laughs> Um, gargoyles are beautiful. They are so cheap. They're so good. And they really, in my experience, they give the faction wings because the literally Tyranids without gargoyles would not be that same 48% win rate I know and love. <laughs> they would be lower by a lot. Because <laughs> gargoyles have won me personally several games, so I'm sure they're doing it for other people too. Um yeah, it's they they don't you, we have shaved away the frills of am I trying to do damage? Do I have the grenade keyword? Am I remotely tough? None of that matters. Instead, we have twice as many dudes and we are OC2 and we are still pretty cheap. Yeah. It's like taking Vanguard, you don't have the the minus 1 OC, but instead you have the speed to get into all the nooks and crannies that you need to. It really is an amazing unit. Mm -hmm. I mean, frankly, it's it's the one like because Tyranids are pretty monodimensional otherwise. They're sending a bunch of monsters up the table okay. at you. When Gargoyles in, they add a completely different dimension to the army and allows it to do a variety of things, and your opponent yeah. has to think about a lot more than, I'm going to get shot by Exocrines, charged I by I assure Malsifters. you, they don't have to think about it. There will not be consequences. Don't worry about there it. There are a lot of consequences. By the way, you can't move. It's called no primary. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> What's the scoreboard between friends? <laughs> So I think these guys are the gold standard of a trash unit. Yeah. They, everything they do has nothing to do with damage. Although I will say, don't ask why, my gargoyles are very good at taking one wound off of Kane. I could not, I could not put a save on a scout to save my life. But every time I shoot them at Kane, I get a wound. <laughs> the Avatar also likes the gargoyles. Yeah, he appreciates is, them. That's true. It's just more than I get when I shoot an Exocrine at Kane, to be clear. Just, only, just a gargoyle does one wound. Um, it's quite easy. So I I just love them. But that is going to wrap up the tier list. Absolutely. So hope everybody enjoyed this one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, you know, there's a lot of trash units in the game that are seen mm -hmm. uh, quite often. So if one of your favorites didn't make the list, please let us know in the comments below. And uh, in addition, please like the channel, subscribe, and uh, give us a like as well. All of that massively helps us grow. Mm -hmm. And in addition, if you want to see things like gargoyles in action at their full potential, check out the worm, the worm.vhx.tv. There is a wonderful three-day free trial. And in addition to that, you get access to our iOS and Android apps uh, where you get all the valuable app features of watching on your phone whenever mm -hmm. you want to, uh, streaming that content as needed. And uh, you also get access to our three games per week, our Jack Theory mm -hmm. Masterclass series. Right now, it's the Sisters Masterclass. Indeed. So I know there's a lot of Sisters fans out there. So if you want uh, somebody who's been playing Sisters week in, week out at events and uh, against other top-level players in that practice for a potential Team USA spot, mm -hmm. you know, check out Mr. Nick Nanavati's Masterclass. All right. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. We appreciate you, and we'll see you on the next video. We'll see you next time, Bye everybody. Thank you so much, and uh, you have a great one.